In this video, we're going to be looking at the second of our forms that we have to create in our activity six of our paper B. In here, we are asked to create an input form to check the staff availability. The form should not include a validation field of any sort, and it should not include any automated routines to save the data. The user should be able to select the job role. The user should be able to select either Friday or Saturday as the day that they want to use or check for availability. And after the job role and day have been selected, the form must display a list of the names of staff who are available and the total of the staff available for that job role and that day. So what we're going to do to create this form, we're going to click on create, form design, and load up a blank form. In here, we're going to follow along a very similar process as we did in the first question of activity six. We're going to create two combo boxes. Simply click on it and drag it onto our desktop area here. The first combo box that we're going to create is our availability. So we're going to click in the option for type in the values that I want. Click next. And this is where we're going to enter in the values for Friday and Saturday as our selection. Once we've done so, click on next. And we're going to give a label for our combo box to say availability. And then click finish. We've now got our unbound availability drop down box. We're going to follow the same sort of process by adding a combo box just below our availability. But this time around, instead of typing our own values, we want to use the values from another table. So let's leave this one checked as it is and click on next. Here we're going to need to look at and go at access our job role table because we want to get the job role for all of the employees of a certain type. So if we select the job role table and click next, we want to choose the job role itself. We're going to click on a single arrow over just to bring it over into our selected fields and click next. As we've done before, and as you've seen in the previous example, if I click on the drop down here for our sorting, you'll notice that the job role ID is also being brought over for us. This is because this is acting as our foreign key in our table here, and we're going to be playing around with that later on to link our sub form and our forms together. Click next on here, and you'll see that just for confirmation purposes is that the job roles that we have available are bartender, steward, and security. And we have a checkbox here to say that hide the first column, which is the ID key. If I uncheck that, you'll notice that it says job role ID, and you can see here the IDs that we've got. But we're not interested in these, so we're going to hide these, make sure that the tick box is checked, and click on next. Now, as we did before, we're going to give the label to our combo box of job type, and then click on finish. Now that we've got both of our uh, combo boxes, we're just going to check by clicking on the view button just to make sure that they're all working as we would like them to. And I'm happy with how they are. We're going to go back into the design view. And this time we're going to use a new control in our controls panel, which is a sub form. That is this icon here. If We click on that and then click anywhere on our desktop area. It's going to follow a wizard as long as we've got the wizard checked. We want to use an existing table and query. If we click on next here, we're going to be shown a list of the queries and the tables that we have available. Now we want to show all of the information relating to the person or persons that are available on a certain day of a certain job role. So we're going to be looking at the staff table to make sure we can pull all the information through for the, the surname, the forename and their availability. We're going to pull over all of the information here. We can either click on the single arrow or the double arrow to bring it all over, and we're going to click next. And then we'll click on finish. Now you'll notice here we've now got a form inside of a form. Um, this is quite important because once we've chosen our options here, we want this form to display information based upon our options and choices we've got here. But in order for us to achieve that, we're going to need to update how this form is looking or what fields that this form is looking 
or or two to get the information from. So as you can see, I've highlighted it here and it is selected. We're going to move over to our property sheet on the right hand side and you'll see that we've got our name visible, the source object, and then we have link master field and link child fields. These are the areas where we're going to need to enter in the field names for our combo boxes and the values or the field names inside of the table that we want them to link to. So in here, we're going to type in the name of our combo box. Now, if we click on the combo box, you may notice that it is named combo zero and combo two. It's good practice to make sure that these are obviously relating to a proper name rather than just combo. So we're going to change it to C B O for combo. And then we're going to put availability. And we're going to do the same thing for our job type. C B O job type. So now we're going to go back to that form, making sure it's highlighted. You can see the halo around the actual subform itself and we're going to click inside this master field and we're going to link to our check boxes or our drop by and box combo boxes that we've got over here so we're going to type in cbo availability then we're going to put a semicolon in because we want to check on two master fields the other master field being the combo box of job type And then we're going to have the other linking field. So we want availability. And then a semicolon. And we're going to do job type. And this time we're going to choose ID. Because we're looking at this table here, this table only has, if I scroll down, the job type ID or the job role ID, I should say. So that is the only field that we're going to be able to link to. So we need to make sure that we're linking the ID to this ID here. That will be because on the form earlier on, we were looking at bringing over the foreign key as well as the actual name itself. So I'm just going to update what I've written here. Instead of job type ID, it's going to be job role ID. And I'm going to do the same here just to make sure that everything is as it should be. The job role ID. Job. Job role type. Job role ID. And I'm just going to make sure my combo box over here is correct as well. So job role. This is job role type. And then we're going to run it. Now notice when we run it, it shows nothing inside of our table here because we've got nothing selected in here in our combo boxes. But if I choose Friday and then choose the job type of bartender, it should list all of the job, uh, the job types of bartender on the Friday. If I do the Saturday, I will see that the bartenders for the Saturday are displayed. Now that's part of our requirements for this question. However, we need to make sure that we're giving an identifier as the number of staff available. Now, in order for us to do that, we're going to create an additional field or additional part to this table here. So we're going to go back to our design view and we need to change how our subform appears and how it looks. So instead of it being a form that shows columns of data, we're going to need to make this a continuous form. So in order for us to do that, as long as it's selected, click on the little box in the corner here, like we've done with our forms before. And this is going to control how this form looks. We're going to change its default view. And the default view is going to be a continuous form. So this will allow us to have an entry per part of the form, per person, per ID, per detail, and then if we scroll down, it will show the same again, but the next entry for our records, rather than having one form where we but click on buttons to go between the records. So let's just check that that's working first of all. So as you can see, there's one entry there. If I now scroll down, 
obviously there's another entry and there's another entry but that's still no use for us in terms of being able to calculate or count how many records there are for this purse or for this Saturday with being a bartender job role. Yes, we can see the records selector down here, but what would be nice for us is to have some form of um, total or tally that's identified to the user using it so it's very, very clear. So in order for us to do that, we're going to go back into the design view again. And this time we're going to scroll to the very bottom of our subform. And we're going to go into the form footer. I'm going to expand the form footer out a little bit more. And we're going to drag in a new text field. And we're going to put text field in there. And we're going to give it a label. And this is just going to say something along the lines of total available staff. If it overlaps, it's not a problem. What we can do is click on the label and just click on the big handle and drag it along a little. And then we're going to go in here and we're going to add a formula. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a value inside of here with equals. And then we're going to do a count. Then we're going to have a curly bracket, a square bracket. And then we're going to count the job role IDs that appear. So capital J B role ID, square bracket, curly bracket. It's always good practice to look for the IDs and count the IDs because remember, someone might have omitted the surname or a first name of a, a person inside of our table, but as long as there's a primary key or a foreign key or some sort of unique identifier for that record, then it's a good idea to count those. So if we now run this, what should happen is that we should be able to see that, yep, there is three records of total available staff that does correlate with our record set down here. If I change that to Friday, we can see that if I scroll through, we have one, two, three records here. And yes, again, that does tally there. Let's change the role to security. We can see that we've got four identified here. If I start scrolling through, yep, record set eventually catches up with our tally here. And we can see we've got four again. So in response to our question two of activity six, we can see now that we have the ability for someone to select the job role, which is here, select the available date, which is either Friday or Saturday. They're gonna be able to see all of the staff available and they're going to be able to get a calculation or a tally or total of the number of staff available on those days of that job role. And that will conclude the Activity 6 requirements.